Hello everyone. Welcome back to one, one of our episodes about uh, fundamental analysis. Today we'll talk about a very important uh, multiple that we almost all investors actually use it. It's the peer ratio. But we'll look at a different peer ratio that not so many people talk about. Today we'll talk about justified peer ratio. We all know what a peer ratio is. Peer is basically the price of the stock divided by earnings per share for the last 12 months one one way of looking at of looking at it so it's a TTM turning 12 months what does this actually mean it means the price today and the earnings for the last 12 months you look at the last 12 months you see what the EPS is for the stock and you come up with that EPS okay let's say that a stock is trading at a peer ratio of 10 times. Basically, it means that if the price of the stock is trading at 10 and the EPS is 1, if you just divide 10 by 1, you come up with this 10 times peer ratio. The question now becomes, is the 10 peer ratio fair enough for the stock? Should it be trading at 12? Should it be trading at 8 times? What's the real, the fair value or the fair peer ratio, so to speak, for the stock? This is what we call justified peer ratio. Okay, let's go back to the uh, one of our very fundamental uh, formulas, which is the Gordon Growth Model. Basically, it says that the price of the stock P0 equals D1, dividends for next year, divided by cost of equity minus G. D1 is, as I said, is dividends per share. This is for next year, D1. Okay, divided by what? By R, which is the cost of equity. And cost of equity is basically your required rate of return or your discount rate. Minus G, and G here is the growth rate. What What is it growth rate for? It's growth, growth rate for D1, dividends uh, coming next year. So what's the rate that the dividends will be growing at until 20? Just you have to come up with this formula to tell what, what the price of the stock is. But actually what we're looking for here not the price of the stock, but the P-E ratio of the stock. So quite fairly easy. You can just divide each side of the equations by E, the earnings per share, to come to have a, a, a P-E ratio on one side of the equations. So here, if you divide the left-hand side P0 by EPS1, and you have to divide also the right-hand side of the equation by EPS1, and you have this new formula. Basically, it's P0 divided by EPS1, which is the PE ratio for the next year's next year's earnings, equals D1 by, uh, divided by R minus G. Then you divide all of this by EPS1. And basically, what we're doing is this EPS goes from the denominator all the way to the numerator, and you end up with D1. You can just divide the D1 by EPS1. Then you divide by R minus G, it's the same thing. So basically, what we're doing here, we're actually creating another ratio. So we have to think about what D divided by EPS means. Okay, so D divided by EPS. D is the dividends, EPS is the earnings per share or the profits. Okay, so if you take the dividends, then you divide that by EPS. This is actually a, a ratio that we know, it's payout ratio. How much, what's the percentage of earnings that you pay out to shareholders? So assume that the company has an EPS of one and they distribute 0 0.50 or half of that. It's basically the payout ratio is 50%. So now we have the numerator, which is 50%. What about the denominator? You have the R, the discount rate is 20%. This is just an assumption. And you have the G growth rate, which is another 10%. Okay. And basically, you have the 20 and the 10, and P ratio will be 50% divided by 20% minus 10%. So, in other words, your P ratio is basically 50% divided by 10%. And this is basically five times. So the justified peer ratio for this company, given its fundamentals, is five times. Remember that the stock was trading at ten times. Now we're calculating it as five times. 
it means that the stock is probably overvalued. Of course, we have to note that uh, we're comparing here the ratio that we calculated at the, at the top was 10 times based on trading 12 months. You can do the same thing also for, of course, the next 12 months, and you can then you can compare the five times to that uh, uh, peer ratio. Okay, this is what we call the justified peer ratio. So based on fundamentals, you can tell what the peer ratio of that stock should be. This ends our episode. Next time, we'll talk about the more fundamental ratios. Thank you.